Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Now I've talked in the past about how model railroaders tend to be a thrifty bunch and I've also talked about alternatives to using the hobby shop when it comes to trying to find supplies that you use for day-to-day -day activities when modeling. Now I'm not about to abandon my series on craft store craftiness, but I thought I'd go a little different this time and talk about the dollar store. So let's talk today about some things that I found there that could come in very handy for you and your modeling purposes. Now I will say that the last time I went to the dollar store, everything was a dollar and a quarter. So maybe they need to rename the store. I don't know. Either way, it's still a pretty inexpensive way to stock up on various things that you can use on your layout. This video is brought to you in part by my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some extras as well, you can follow the link in the description below to join the Pixel Depot's Patreon community for as little as $2 per month. In my various videos on scenery, one of the things that I have talked about is using real dirt as ground cover. What I usually do is go out to a location, get some dirt, and then sift that down. Now, when you're getting dirt from the outside world, there could be any kind of creepy crawlies lurking in that dirt. And one way to get rid of those is to bake it before you go through the sifting process. You throw it in the oven for a little while at a couple hundred degrees, few hundred degrees, and that will kill just about anything that is in there. Now, one of the things I've learned along the way is that it is better for my health if I don't use regular kitchen pots, pans, and utensils for these modeling purposes. So this is where the dollar store comes in. I found these aluminum foil pans. They come in various different sizes. This one happens to have a plastic cover, although for the baking purpose, you probably wouldn't need that. Throw it in the oven for the allotted amount of time. And then when you're done, you can either reuse that pan or just throw it away. That is your choice. So aluminum baking pans from the dollar store. Regular viewers will know that I often use sticky notes as palettes for both gluing, for CA and other types of glue, as well as for painting. Full price post-it notes that you might get from the office supply store can be pretty pricey. So once again, the dollar store comes to the rescue. I found this package of 250 sticky notes, that is five pads of 50 sheets each. And while for normal office use, they may or may not be the greatest, for the purpose of using them for pallets, they are going to do just fine. It provides a nice compact area for putting that material down and for having access to it. And when you're done, cleanup is incredibly easy because all you do is peel the sheets off and throw them away. I usually keep a pad or two on the workbench so that I have them at a moment's notice. So having five relatively thin pads works out quite well for that purpose. And while you could just peel off the pieces as you need them, I find, especially for CA, that the material will tend to bleed through at least one or two sheets, so I tend to keep it on the pad, and that way if I need to rip off a couple of sheets it's no big deal, and nothing is bleeding through onto my workbench surface. I have a monthly modeling day, and what that means is that I have some friends who regularly come over, typically on the second Saturday of the month, and we work on the layout for a few hours. Sometimes we'll do an operating session, but generally it is an opportunity to eat pizza, have some cookies, and maybe get a little bit of work done on the layout. For the jobs that need to get done, I usually use sticky notes and put them on the fascia of the layout to describe the tasks that need to get taken care of. When people come in, they'll take a look at the sticky notes that are around the room and figure out what they might want to work on that particular day. Now, full disclosure, I use the extreme post-it notes for that particular piece of it because sometimes those sticky notes will stay on the layout for months at a time. And the regular sticky notes, the glue just doesn't hold up for that amount of time. But having said all that, I still did find at the dollar store something that could come in handy. I found these small sticky note flags, and they come in various colors. Looks like there's 10 different colors in there. And these would come in handy for pointing out specific areas on the layout where work might need to get taken care of. So you could have the sticky note that talks about the task, and then use one of these arrows to point to the specific location where that might come in handy. There are 400 flags in the package, and because they are multicolored, you could probably even categorize their use. One color for electrical, perhaps, and a different color for track work, and so on. Either way, I think these would come in handy. Sticky note flags from the dollar store. 
Now, if using a sticky note as a palette isn't really your style, then the dollar store can still help you there as well. I found this package of six plastic palettes there. These are pretty small, so I think they're designed for watercolors or something like that. But given the amount of paint we typically use when we're using our craft paints and modeling paints and so on, these would come in really handy in terms of being able to mix colors there. Because of their size, they'd be pretty easy to clean up. The other thing that's nice about this particular size is if you're like me and have a million things going on in your workbench at once and you have things moving around all over the place at any given time, these are pretty unobtrusive. You can put it in the corner and not have to worry about knocking it over or spilling it. As I mentioned, there are six in the package, so at just under 17 cents a piece, if you really went to town and happened to ruin one, throwing it away isn't going to be that big of a deal. Given that there are six of them and their small size, you could actually have these located in various locations around the layout room so that you have them handy for a number of different projects at any given time. While we're talking about my favorite adhesive CA, one of the things that we should probably also mention is wax paper. I found this package of wax paper at the dollar store, and once again, this is a type of thing that you can get at the grocery store, but if you can get a roll for a buck, that's probably a pretty good deal. This particular one is 65 square feet, and this looks like it's about a foot wide, so it's probably 65 feet in length. I tend not to use very much of this at a given time, so at a length of 65 feet, that's gonna keep you in wax paper for a good long time. So check out the dollar store for wax paper. I talk about using emery boards all the time. Now, typically I'll pick those up in bulk from the pharmacy or the drugstore, but one of the things that came up in the comments of one of my videos was to look for emery boards at the dollar store. So when I went this time, that's exactly what I did. So I found this package of 16 pieces at the dollar store, which isn't quite as many as I would normally get in a package from the drugstore, but they're probably a third of the price, so that works out pretty well. Another thing that I liked about this particular package was that there are different sizes in there. So what I normally find with the ones I get from the drug store is they're all typically the same size and the grits are the same on them. This particular package not only has different sizes but appears to have some different grits in there too and the tapering is a little different than the ones that I've seen from the drugstore as well. So it'll be interesting to see how these ones work out and how well they hold up. But emery boards from the dollar store. Now I know from the comments of previous videos that a lot of you shop at the dollar store for finding supplies just like this. So if there's anything that you specifically seek out when you go to the dollar store, I'd love to hear about that in the comments below. Similarly, if there are other uses for the items that we've talked about in this video today, I would love to hear about that as well. The comments are also the places for other questions and suggestions. If you enjoyed this video and want to click the like button, that would make me happy. If you click the subscribe button, that'll probably make me even a little happier than that. And if you want to click the bell so that you'll know when new content is available, that's probably some level of happy in between those two. So that's all for today's video. To check out my videos on craft store craftiness, click on the playlist button at the top left of your screen. You can also click down here for other great content. My name is Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room.